Hi guys, this is Aditya Vora here. Hope all is well at your end. A week ago, the stock of Crompton Greaves Consumer Electricals, one of the leading makers of fans and LED lights, plummeted by 7 to 8%. While the one day fall was roughly 8%, the stock has more than halved over the past one year. And today it is trading at its 52 week low. Now, as a value investor, when stocks lose half their market capitalization in a year, it definitely rings a bell to us. But the question is, is this a value buy or is this a value trap? Well, if you look at it purely from a valuation perspective, the stock is available at very inexpensive valuations. And let me tell you why. Two most important parameters which are used to gauge a stock valuations are signaling a strong buy. The first parameter, which is the 10 year average price to earning ratio. Now, when you look at the 10 year average P ratio, in my opinion, a stock should always be bought below its 10 year average P ratio. The reason being 10 years considers two business cycles for any industry. And the second parameter is one standard deviation below its 10 year mean valuation. So the question to be asked is, where does Crompton stand in the valuation matrix? The valuation of Crompton fits both the criteria. The 10 year average P ratio comes to roughly 40 times, while the current valuations are at 31 times, which is roughly a 23% discount to its average 10 year price to earnings multiple. And the other criteria is the discount to its 10 year mean P ratio. Currently, the stock is one standard deviation below its mean, which indicates it is an attractive bet. Now, if the stock is undervalued on multiple parameters, why are people not rushing to buy the stock? I am sure D Street knows something more than just plain numbers. Since we are on this topic, I am reminded by a very famous quote by Warren Buffett relating to this topic. He says, if history was all that is needed to play the game of money, the richest people would be librarians. After all, to make money in the stock market, it is very pertinent to get a sense of what is happening outside your cubicle. The word for it is scuttlebutt investing. It is a type of investing where you focus on things like interacting with dealers and customers, talking to people who are suppliers to the company, visiting the company's plant and so on and so forth. Now hold on to that thought just for a minute. A few months ago, I was reading a book which spoke about the journey of successful investors in India. Amongst them was a reclusive investor by the name of Mr. Govind Parekh. I am sure very few people must have heard about him as he likes to keep a very low profile. Now, Mr. Govind Parekh's first substantial bet in the stock market was the cement company called Ramco Cements. Back then in 1984, Ramco Cements had its AGM in Rajapalayam, Tamil Nadu. Mr. Parekh along with few other investors from Mumbai had gone to Tamil Nadu to attend the AGM. Back then, it was quite a thing to travel to a different state to attend AGMs. Only serious and big investors did it. You know, the management at Ramco Cements was so transparent that every time an investor met them, they made it a point to minutely explain the working of the company. Apart from that, they also made sure that every investor gets an opportunity to visit their plant which was just an hour and a half away from their corporate office. Now, if you look at the financials of the company or the annual report, every year the fixed assets of the company jumped and along with it the depreciation too was also very high. Ultimately, for more than a couple of years, this dragged profitability of the company. Now, for anyone sitting in a cubicle, it would raise a red flag when they encountered such high depreciation numbers. However, on visiting the plant, the story was completely different. Ramco Cement was always ahead of the curve in terms of technology. For example, 
they bought an equipment called combiden mill which is used to grind cement now they had purchased it for rupees 90 million during the late 1980s and expensed it equally over the next 2 years instead of capitalizing it now this was precisely the reason why profits for at least 2 to 3 years were understated now tell me an analyst sitting in a cubicle would think of this as a very bad investment however the story was very different the plant managers there told the investors that the combidan mill had a payback period of barely a year and also since ramco cement was one of the first companies to import such technology the suppliers gave them a huge discount no annual report would speak of this another revelation which mr parekh made was how suppliers and stakeholders can influence investing decisions on speaking to the company suppliers it was found out that the entire top management had a working knowledge of the plant every aspect of the plant was known to the md ceo and every executive on the board in short the leadership was hands on everything and barely sat in their cubicle so the question is how does all this relate to the street's opinion on crompton consumer after all we are discussing the stock of crompton consumer to be precise well apart from the increasing competitive intensity in the fans and light business along with the uncertainty in its new acquisition of butterfly gandhimati appliances there is one thing which i think the street is missing recently the company appointed a new managing director and ceo unlike the top management of ramco cements the new md and ceo has always been an investment banker while i am sure he has been on boards of multiple companies the problem in my opinion is that you need to be an operations guy to understand the nerves of the business the reason why ramco cements thrived and was ahead of its competitors was the hands on operational experience of the management back then in its operations department on speaking to multiple people in the consumer electronics industry the apprehension is that the need of the r is an operations guy and not an investment banker in fact let me give you one more example the reason why britannia gets a higher multiple and has stability is due to the ceo mr varun berry another example is dmart where mr radhakishan damani chose the ceo of dmart who was amongst the top guys in the operations team at hindustan unilever so friends the reason why i spoke about ramco cements was to highlight the fact that nuances of a company are found when speaking to industry participants looking at crompton consumer from only a valuation perspective might not be such a smart thing to do while it is too early to judge the new ceo of crompton consumer the street really doesn't like the uncertainty and that is precisely one of the reasons why the stock despite being inexpensive is not re-rating in my opinion if the new ceo delivers then the re-rating will be fast and steep well time shall tell whether the investment banker can change the fortunes of the company so friends thank you for watching my video and do let me know in the comment section if you have any observations thank you